Hi guys, John the Quant here. This video, it does go along with week five of the Data Science Bootcamp, but it's worth watching on its own. Now this is about gradient descent, and we're not going to do a deep dive here. We're not going to get into the weeds and the math and everything too much. This is really just to help you guys get a feel for how gradient descent works and the thought process behind it and how it's really all pretty much based off of really entry-level calculus one. Let's get into it. Many machine learning algorithms learn through gradient descent. Now, this is a mathematical idea and it is hard to do. It's hard to program, but it's not hard to understand. And all the packages that we're going to use in this boot camp, they all do gradient descent for us. We don't have to specify it or program it ourselves. But here's a quick idea of how it works. All right. So we've taken like a, a linear regression model and we put random numbers in the coefficients. They're just completely random numbers. They don't matter. And we calculate the total error using what is called a loss function. Now, a loss function is just a function that measures the total error in a way that's mathematically convenient. Okay. Typically, for statistical reasons, we often use what is called the negative log likelihood. But for now, just know that it is a mathematically convenient way to calculate the total error in all the predictions on the training data. So if you have taken a Calculus 1 course, then you are familiar with the idea of a derivative. But the basic idea of a derivative in a machine learning context is how much does the error change if we make a small change to the model? And again, if you've taken a Calculus 1 course, you probably also remember that a function is either maximized or minimized when the derivative is zero. So in machine learning, we want to minimize the error, right? So if we can find where the derivative of the error is zero, then we found an optimal model. Now this is practically or definitely impossible almost all of the time, but if we can estimate the derivative, then we can use it to make small changes to the model over and over, improving it just a little bit at a time until we've made the error as low as we can. And that is how machine learning works. Now let's look at an example with visuals. We're going to do a quick example of gradient descent, and we're going to use linear regression. All right, our model looks like this. Y is equal to some coefficient times x. And alpha is the coefficient of x, and we know that the true value of the coefficient is 2. We know that this should end up being y equals 2x. And in this ex example of gradient descent, we're going to use the mean squared error as the loss function, and this is the mean squared error. You take your predictions, which is alpha times x, <coughs> you subtract off the actual values y, square it, add them all up, and divide by the number of predictions. Mean squared error. Mean squared, and then error. And the derivative of this loss function, for you calculus people, this is the derivative with respect to alpha. It's a simple chain rule, and it ends up being uh, 2 times x times the error, sum it up, and then take the mean. So what we're going to do in this next cell is we're going to try a random coefficient. Then we're going to calculate the loss function and the gradient. Then we're going to calculate a new coefficient. So that's the new coefficient is equal to the old coefficient minus tau, where tau is some small number called the learning rate, times the gradient, this derivative here. So we'll have this derivative calculated. We'll multiply by tau, and then we'll take the old coefficient and subtract this change term to get our new coefficient. And then we're going to calculate the new loss function and gradient. And then we're going to repeat steps three and four over and over until either the loss function is like really low or we've done it like, uh, I don't know, a thousand times or something. Okay, so it goes calculate the loss function and gradient, calculate a new coefficient, calculate the loss function and gradient, calculate the new coefficient over and over and over until we're done. So this is our data set here. Um, We've just generated it so that we know that the correct answer is that y equals 2x plus some random noise. And it looks like this. y equals 2x, random noise. Now the first step, we're going to randomly initialize the model. We use some, just got uh, np.random.normal, all right, scale equals 10. So our first coefficient actually was negative 8.8. And as you can see, it's a terrible model, really, really awful. Way, way off. We know that the correct answer is 2, but uh, even if we didn't know that, looking at this graph, we would know that negative 8.8 .8 is a bad guess. 
first I calculated the error. So error is just the predictions minus the actual values. Then square it and take the mean. That's the mean squared error. Okay, and the mean squared error was about 15 and a half thousand, which again reinforces that this model is awful. Really, really awful. Now we calculate the gradient, which we said was two times x times the coefficient times x minus y. So this is the error times x again and then times 2. And you take the mean of that to get the gradient. And our gradient is negative 2,884. So this model is terrible. But we sure did learn a lot from making a terrible, terrible model. Okay, now to calculate the new coefficient, like we said, we need the learning rate, which we're saying is 0 0.001. Then we're going to do that the new coefficient is equal to the old coefficient minus the learning rate times the gradient. So once we calculate all of that, our first coefficient was negative 8.8, .8, and our new coefficient is negative 5.9. And let's plot that here. And it's still really bad, isn't it? But what happens if we do it like... 25 times, okay? So 25 times, that's what this cell does. It gets the predictions, it calculates the MSE, it calculates the gradient, it calculates the new coefficient. And look at what happens over 25 iterations. This is the coefficient starting out at negative 8.8, .8, and it gets closer and closer to 2 as we go on. And then the gradient, it starts out at like negative 3,000 almost, and it gets closer and closer to 0 as the model learns. So as we're getting closer to 2, which we know is the true coefficient, our gradients are getting smaller. So we're getting closer to the right answer and we're taking smaller steps toward the right answer. So if we plot this out, we can see that our first model, which was awful and is represented by this red line, was just way off. But we took a step, right? And we took a big step and we got a lot closer with our second model, the orange line here. And then we took a few more steps, and we got it way closer with the fifth model, the, the yellow line here. And we took a few more steps, and we got way, way, way closer with this violet model, the tenth one. We took a few more steps, and we're at this purple model, the fifteenth one. And then just a few more steps, and we're at the green line where the coefficient is 1.96. And we know that the correct coefficient is 2. So in just 25 steps, we went from a really, really awful model to one that is almost statistically perfect. That's how gradient descent works. And this idea powers everything from this super simple single coefficient linear model that we just made all the way up to the big LLMs like Llama 3 and uh, whatever is under ChatGPT these days. It's all based on this same idea. That was gradient descent in just a few minutes. And as I said over on the laptop, this powers everything from that simple little linear model like you just saw all the way up to that, that thing in DoorDash whenever you like take a picture and it reads your receipt. Okay, it's a very powerful, powerful thing based on these very simple mathematical ideas. Now, if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if you learned something in this very short video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to keep learning with me, go ahead and subscribe. See you later.